Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. Today I'm going to be talking about the Convoy S2 Plus in titanium, and this is the new version that Simon has actually released, and he's got a stone wash version as well, if the polished look isn't something that you're keen on. But this is probably my favorite S2 Plus host. I do have a few, one in aluminium, uh, one in MAO, and also one in copper. And I find this one is just, I mean, look at it, it's like a million bucks and isn't as heavy as the copper one, but you know, a bit heavier than the aluminium, but also a lot more durable. So I would say that this is a great quality host on a budget, the general S2 plus, and a lot of people collect these as well and they get different emitters. If you want to try different emitters, it's a very cost effective way and it's also a great quality host for what you pay for. So I think the polished titanium just looks and feels a step above and is more premium. You know, titanium is stronger than steel, slightly heavier than aluminium, like I mentioned, and the light feels really robust and just refuses to scratch up when I have it with my other lights. Um, it's not coated with anything. This is the bare metal. And uh, I got mine with the SFT40 in here. That's my emitter of choice these days for hosts of this sort of size. You know, I also like the XHP 50.3 high. But yeah, it's, you know, got good throw, good output. It does get a little bit hot on the higher modes, but it's something I'm fine to put up with. I find a lot of people get these with the Nichia 509A, and that just provides superior color accuracy and tint options. You can choose from a very orangey beam to... Yeah, like a cool white option. So here are my other S2 Plus hosts. I've got the normal black aluminium, the copper version, we see titanium and the micro arc oxidation. And I think my favorite out of all of these has to be, like I mentioned, the titanium one. I can't decide between these two here, the, the copper and the micro arc oxidation though. The micro arc just looks so clean as well. I mean, these two are really fantastic looking. This one's a little bit interesting. It's a copper one of the special versions that Simon released. I don't know if they still have this on his website. I'll have to check it out. But there's also a checkered version that looks just like that one. Though it has a, another brand on it. It says Lit Knit. So yeah, if you're interested in that one, you can have a look. But I just thought I'll put them up so you can see them side by side. Alrighty, so here is a little close-up so you can have a look at the detail on this light. Beautifully machined. It's got a silvery gray color. Probably more silver because it's been polished up but in the stonewash version, it's more of a grayish color. One of the things I really like about these bare metal finishes is that they age very well, scratches and knocks and that kind of thing. You're not gonna be able to see them as obviously as if you have an anodized light. If the anodized light, you're gonna have that chip and the anodization. It just looks a little bit shoddy after a while. And yeah, for me, it annoys me a little bit. So I take a bit more care with my anodized flashlights, making sure they don't whack up against each other these days, but yeah. If you're looking for something that's more durable, I think this is a really good option. I mean, titanium, just due to the density and hardness of the alloy, is a lot more harder wearing. So, yeah, you've got these checkered knurling cutouts on the head as well. I think they're very elegant and they're simple as well. I do like this uh, knurling on the battery tube especially. It gives it a nice amount of grip. Okay. And, yeah, I actually put this clip on myself. It doesn't come with a clip. Okay, but you can get another clip from Convoy. It's like a smaller stainless steel clip that uh, goes around here as well. And you can carry that around. I think the clip doesn't go as high as this one. I got this from one of my Nightcore flashlights and it doesn't really fit on there, but I can just clip it on. And the great thing is that with these friction rings, normally when you put them on to anodize flashlights, you scratch off some of the anodization, looks a little bit dirty afterwards, but uh, with the titanium, no issue at all. In fact, it probably scratches the clip more than anything else, which is a good thing. And yeah, I'm just clipping it onto the body. It's not really got a proper point, but yeah, with titanium, like I mentioned before, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Here's a close-up of the emitter. It's the SFT40 with smooth reflector, and you can unscrew the head to access the pill. It's a simple bezel, so there's no way to actually get into that bezel itself. Uh, yeah, basically you just got to open it up from the back like this. Okay, and uh, yeah, unscrew this little pill if you want to get into the head. But I think that's a good option. I mean, a lot of lights don't offer that ability to do that, especially with the more mainstream flashlights. They don't want you to go in there, mess around, and avoid the warranty. 
So in terms of the UI, it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same as all of my other S2 pluses. I get the one with the 12 mode grouping. This one only comes with 12, 12 mode, mode grouping. So what that means is, uh, yeah, you basically just turn the flashlight on, you tap that 20 times, and there are 12 different modes you can actually select from. And on the Convoy website, it will uh, you actually list those modes and how to get into, get into them. So I'll put that in the description as well. But I've got mine set to uh, one where it's just five different modes. So you get one, two, three, four, five. And okay, that's 100%. So I find that's pretty good. And But sometimes what I do is I set it just to 100%. So I can use this as a tactical flashlight and being able to access that 100% mode all at once, I think is really important. So whenever you turn it on, it just goes to 100% and that's it. And I like the ability to customize this light to, you know, it could be used as just a normal light around the house, it could be used as a tactical light. It also has other modes that you can select from in the grouping. So things like SOS, you've got strobe, and you also got a bike mode. So if you, yeah, if you ride a bike, you want to stick this onto the front of your bike as an alert sort of thing. I mean, this is great as well. All right, so I've run a bunch of ceiling bounce tests and you can see here I've got the light on 100% and it kind of hovers, goes up and down for the first maybe 30 seconds or so, but uh, the big ramp down starts just after about a minute and it goes all the way down to about 30 to 40% of the flashlight's output and just stays there. I left that on past a 10 minute mode. I also ran another ceiling bounce test on 35% and this one was actually really good. You can see it starts off at 100%, slowly kind of drops down to about 90% and 85 to 90% I would say and continues on past a 16 minute uh, mark where it just stays flat. So regulation is pretty good on that mode and I like that you do get a little bit of boost in the beginning but it does maintain most of that output. I think that's quite impressive given the size of this flashlight. Even 35% is quite respectable. It is very bright. I thought I'd include this ceiling bounce test as well to show you the difference between the copper version and the titanium version and the copper version as you can see it does hold at 100% for longer. So it's not as steep as you can see with the titanium version. It kind of goes up and down, but it drops a bit faster, but has a very similar performance curve. Um, when I had them both out in person, honestly, I couldn't tell much of a difference. They both dropped down, you know, because they are quite small hosts. They drop down a little bit faster than normal hosts, but you, know, you still get good 30 seconds of 100% uh, mode on there. It does maintain its lumens. One thing I did found was that the head of this uh, light gets really hot, the titanium version. Also ran a bunch of tests using Marple Light Master Pro, and you can see it here up on the screen. On 100%, I got 339 meters of throw. Color rendering index was 70.5, and the CCT was 6700. So really cool white color, and you know, pretty standard with the SFT40. It's just more a visibility sort of light. It's not the best for color recognition, but I think it's still acceptable. The SFT40 in this host produces a really nice throwy beam and the hotspot's very pronounced even for a small reflector like this, but it does have a good amount of spill as well. And the spill and the hotspot blend nicely into each other smoothly. And it's always a challenge with smaller lights like this, you know, to get that extra throw, but to make that, that beam still look aesthetically pleasing as well. So some considerations. There's a few things you need to know about. There's less heat dissipation on this light. Okay, there is a copper pill in here, helps transfer the heat to the head, but it doesn't eliminate heat as fast as aluminum or copper. So as a consequence, the head of this light gets very hot on the high modes. Um, I can't even touch it when I've got it on 100% for a few minutes. It, it just, it's ridiculously hot. Okay, so the body is fine. You can still hold it down there, but uh, you really got to be careful that you don't touch the head or you might burn yourself. And again, you can select the lower modes if it gets too hot as well. So it's not an issue for me. The threads also don't feel all that smooth. And I think that's because they're not uh, lubricated. <laughs> well, they're not lubricated so well, okay? Machine nicely, as you can see, nice square cut threads and the good thing about titanium though is that you don't have to be worried about stripping threads they're extremely durable and uh, yeah just keep in mind that you'll probably need to maybe lube these a bit better it doesn't in fact look like there's maybe any lube on mine i forgot to include some lube there 
There's also no onboard charging. So if you're new to flashlights, you're gonna to need to get an external charger. Same with the 18650 battery, though I think Simon's released a version of the S2 Plus that includes a battery. So just check on his website and you'll be able to add that on. Even if it's a few dollars, I think that's a really good deal and buying the battery separately. So all in all, I think this is one heck of a deal for a titanium flashlight, especially a reliable, high quality, high performance flashlight like this. So if you're on the fence, don't be. It's my favorite S2 Plus in my collection and you definitely wanna see this one in person. If you have any comments, um, any questions, let me know down below and I will get back to you. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. It helps me get my videos out to more people. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews, make sure you subscribe. All right, guys, I've got the Convoy S2 Plus SFT40 in titanium on the ground here. Can't really see it on camera. That's the lowest mode. So I've got five different steps. Second step, third. Okay, starting to get a fair bit brighter, and you can see it in the field up ahead. Okay, four. Okay. And we'll put it on the top mode. Reaches all the way to the back. Off. On again. No issues with the trees up the front, even at the back. It's a nice, clear night tonight. There's no dust or anything really in the air, a little bit of, a tiny bit of moisture maybe, but more or less just clear. And flip it back to the uh, fourth mode again, one, two, three, four, that one, it's the fourth mode, probably more realistic mode that you can use, and it still reaches the trees at the back, it looks Definitely more apparent on you know, just looking at it normally without the camera. Put it brighter actually in person. Okay, it's a nice sort of high mode. There's a good amount of spill here on the ground as well. And that's the highest mode 100%. It's pretty cold night as well feels pretty you know, close to like 10 degrees or something like that and i can really feel the head of this light get pretty hot i mean this thing is a fantastic hand warmer a night like this on a night like this it's really handy <laughs> yeah, just trying to get to the head of it normally when you're indoors uh it's a little bit warmer you're probably not going to want to touch the head of it it gets really hot but i mean it's holding its brightness pretty well i think it has ramped down slightly though okay but you can still see it still reaches the back turn it off and just turn it on again not bad 100% Getting almost too hot to to hold it now But it's good to know you can just reactivate that turbo again um, you Don't really feel it down the the battery tube as well uh, Yeah, just basically on the head of the flashlight. You hold it further down the battery tube, no issue. Two, three, four, five. Okay, go for a little stroll forwards. 